This is Twit. Neiman Lab has an article. Google is changing up search. What does that mean for news publishers? They're worried it'll decrease the traffic because people will read the the summary, the AI summary, and never I'm get so to the done. publishers' sites. Yeah, you know what? Uh, like, let's go back twenty years. That exact. I'm I'm done with news organizations. I have <laughs> for the past two decades, and this is. I'm just finished. I'm I'm done having the conversation. You don't, you don't believe they're whining. In other words, I don't believe they're serious about radically reinventing a right. business model that makes sense for but, the 21st uh, century. So, uh, look, I mean... <laughs> I feel I feel zero sympathy. And this is my background. I came out of journalism. Yeah. And, I feel it, and no by the way, this right is now. what we do. I mean, Twit does not do any journalism. We merely comment on existing, you know, work done by other journalistic entities. Um, so we are kind of I think of a Jeff Jarvis and too. I pretty much disagree on everything, and I think this is one <laughs> point that we actually agree on. <laughs> I got to get you on with Jeff then. That sounds like you fun. You should not. You should. That will not be fun for anybody. Oh, that bad, huh? <laughs> uh, but he does agree that the the, uh, the publishers are whining uh, because they're you know Google's done nothing but drive traffic to them. Although I have to say. You know, this is from Neiman Labs. This is a, an example of a barred uh, search where you would get all the information you needed from the AI generated synopsis. But there was, so fine. There this was isn't also a snippet. Graph. This is a lot more than a snippet, though. This is this is a enough information that you could stop right there. Great. Well, and when they introduced the knowledge graph, whatever, seven or eight years ago, they should have had the conversation then. And even before then, when they were indexing websites and nobody understood how, they should have had that conversation then. It's like... There's, there's nothing, there's no like, there's nothing in the Bible or the Constitution or kind of anywhere that guarantees a particular business model the right to perpetual existence. True. Yeah. There's nothing that says that like, but oh if, yeah. But if those original sources go away, what's ChatGPT or Google's SGE going <laughs> to... What's it going to use for the original sources? It's, I mean, it's, it, it, that's a very its own enterprise problem. reporting. <laughs> but the, but the, um, I think that's a very big problem. It's a very big question, but yeah. I think the way forward isn't like, isn't in, in every individual company acting in their narrow short-term self-interest to avoid the work of like reinventing what they do, right? It's everyone saying, oh, but this disrupts, you know, Technology X disrupts the way that I've been doing things for the past Y years. Therefore, something's a problem. Like that is the nature of, of every technological innovation is it's going to disrupt a bunch of stuff. I'm much more concerned about the larger kind of societal implications than I am with individual. You know, yeah. And models. as some have pointed out, in fact, in this Neiman article, uh, it also gets rid of all the sites that are just uh, clickbait. Uh, you know, what right. time does the Super Bowl start? Those call those all go away because... Yeah, Google just answers it, and then you can move on with your life. And the regulatory question is is interesting. Um, you know, there's a you guys know this like uh, you know the big TikTok meme of like the pelican trying to eat a capybara, and it's just like can't quite get its beak around it at all. Uh, <laughs> I've missed that one, but I get the idea. Yes, I think, I think you just Google for pelican and capybara, you probably find it. Um, that's what a lot of this stuff reminds me of. Right, of, of regulators actually trying to you know get their beaks around what to do with this thing and they just kind of can't they can't deal with it and it's a really deep and interesting problem i would say as important yeah exactly <laughs> you've just um, enriched my life significantly phil thank you <laughs> you're welcome uh so uh, what are we gonna do <laughs> maybe we could just take a moment to appreciate this, this, this gift. if this you're gift. not watching the video just imagine a pelican trying to eat a rather large rodent-like mammal and not being able to, <laughs> you, you get the and idea. <laughs> and I would love to like engage in this again in good faith because it's it's easy to like make fun of regulators, but like yeah, to the extent that we need like governments to do something, it's probably about this like potentially society ending you know thing. I, listen, but I'm not sure I feel what you. to do. I feel you, Phil. But I for I don't know six years now, multiple meetings at state at DOD with you the know EU, these guys. You've met with them. The, yes. Yeah. Here, the, the issue is we cannot get our shit together in the United States. The EU's gone a, the, the, a, a, re, a direction that is about regulating, I think, to some degree, without thinking through the knock-on effects. That's and pretty clear. China, if, you, if you go to, the, uh, go to Europe right. and try to surf the web, every page is covered with a cookie banner that you have right. to click through to no purpose whatsoever. Yeah. We, we lack 
long term we lack a long term vision in this country and we lack good long term leadership that's the issue um there was a there's a biden administration just as an example issued an executive order on biotech that literally took it it, it was not his original idea that order it was through four gener it started with the Obama administration and then he couldn't get it done. Trump couldn't get it done. And, and then it was Biden. And really at the end of the day, it's just, a it doesn't have teeth. So we just don't have, one of the things that I've been recommending and trying to stand up is a, uh, so like 10 years ago, I wrote this whole thing and recommended a sort of office cabinet level sort of office of the future. They, they, we did have something called the office of technology assessment that got defunded in the nineties and short of that, we just don't have any, and nobody's in charge of long-term vision on science and tech. And I, I know everybody's got different groups that they will note, but we need something that's horizontal that touches all the other agencies. We don't have that. We've got a whiplash situation in our government. Um, and I think we've got people who are going to become apathetic because we've got the same, it's like a rerun. We've got the same people running again. Uh, for this next go around. I'm actually, and, to be honest, more worried about uh, the end of the world with climate change than I am about whether we're going to, it's really going to be yeah. a race between whether AI takes over or we all get boiled to death in a giant sea of Again, I, this comes dioxide. back to there's something like, like I, the, the, I will no longer bring up Bitcoin around friends because it's a little bit like giving them parenting advice. Like you, I can't talk about religion or parenting or like Bitcoin because there's this religious insanity that takes over. Oh, those people, people have moved on to AI, I thought. Well, that's exactly what I was going to say. So now this AI conversation is yeah. like completely one. polarized. Yeah. yeah, And it's just like, I'm just exhausted. <laughs> well, our one of our editors has just pointed out that thanks to AI, we can bleep all the profanities in this sorry, show. Sorry, I will stop. Automa I'm like, no, I'm no, like not no, no. having it today. That's, I'm so we sorry. We have AI. Please. Swear your little heart out. <laughs> Sorry, I will stop. No, I will it'll stop. be automatically bleeped. It's amazing, this technology. <laughs> Just bleep, bleep, bleep everywhere. Uh, no, this is such a good conversation. And frankly, this is the first, we've been talking about this for months. It's the first time I really feel like I finally have two, nothing wrong with all of our other posts, but two really smart people who've thought about, this is like, you've been thinking about this for almost a decade, who are, you know, kind of insightful into all of this. Uh, it doesn't give me great hope, but it also it, it doesn't, I don't, I'm not worried anymore either, right? Because it's, this, these LLMs aren't going to eat us alive. Look, I'm optimistic. I'm just annoyed. Yes, <laughs> I'm like, that's I'm, in a I'm, nutshell. I think that's Amy as well. Optimistic, but annoyed. Yeah, just, I'm just, I'm less um, eloquent than <laughs> Phil. <laughs> He's a wordsmith, you can tell. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Accelerate your career with IT Pro and ACI Learning. Test your new skills in practice labs with real-world simulations, hands-on experience, and test preparation. Use the code TWIT30 at checkout for 30% off a standard or premium IT Pro membership. Check out go.acilearning.com slash twit to learn more.